Today we are reading Bhagavad Gita as it is by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Chapter 1, text 37 through to 46. We'll just read text 37 and 38 first. Yadyapyate na pashanti lobho pahata chetasaha kulakshaye kritang do sho do shang mitra drohe chapatakam katam nageyamasma bihit papad asman nivartitum kulakshaye kritam do shang prapashyad bhir janadan. Srila Prabhupada's translation. O janadan. Arjuna is addressing Krishna, O Janadan, although these men, their hearts overtaken by greed, see no fault in killing one's family or quarreling with friends, why should we, who can see the crime in destroying a family, engage in these acts of sin? So let's just try to picture in our mind's eye what is the scene. After going through the whole Mahabharat, the whole build-up is towards this tremendous battle which is about to take place between the forces who want Duryodhana to be the king and those who want Yudhishthir to be the king. So on Yudhishthir's army, Arjuna is the main fighter on whom the hopes are pinned and... <coughs> Arjuna, he's not just some ruffian, but he is fighting. His whole intention is that we should fight for that which is right. He's a kshatriya, a, tradition, a real kshatriya, who wants to uphold dharma. Now, Arjuna has been in many, many battles before this. He only fights for the sake of dharma, for truth, for justice, for righteousness. But now he sees that this battle, what will the results be? It's, going to, it's a disaster. A disaster is imminent. Huge that all the fighters of the world are assembled there. They're all going to be killed. A massive battle. And Arjuna is thinking, is this really right? What, we're, what we are about to do to engage in this battle? Especially because... It's a fraternal war. Yudhishthir and Duryodhana are cousin brothers. And on each side, friend is pinned against friend, brother is pinned against brother, disciple is set up against guru, and Arjuna is questioning Krishna, who is the very personification of Dharma, who is Dharma himself, who is the supreme personality of Godhead that my dear Krishna, O Janardana, which means the maintainer of the people, that I have fought in many battles, that this battle, I cannot see that any good can come from this. We should fight so that a situation be, can be created in which goodness can be followed. But I don't see how any goodness can come from this. Just see, what are Arjuna's arguments? that it is a battle to see who should be the king of the world. Now, either Duryodhana is king or Yudhishthir is king, there should be a king. So, Arjuna is saying that, well, definitely Yudhishthir is better than Duryodhana, but is it really, this is Arjuna's doubt, is it really worth that so many people should be killed just for the change of the king? We might be, it may be that in our hearts some kind of ordinary greed has come that we shall be kings of the world. So if we have such a wrong desire, or they have such a wrong desire, that should we fight on these grounds? They may be overtaken by greed, but should we be like that? It's the old formula of two wrongs don't make a right. This is Arjuna's submission that the whole family is going to be destroyed. We may be fighting for a, for a good result, but a bad result will come side by side. There should be a good result if Yudhishthir is put on the throne, 
But if side by side the bad result is that the whole dynasty is totally wiped out and destroyed, is the means worth the end? Another famous moral question Arjuna is posing. Is it really worth it? So Arjuna is thinking, no, it's not worth it. Better let's, all right, Duryodhana, he's not a good man in many ways, but there is the result of deposing him will be worse than letting him sit on the throne. So uh, Arjuna is considering this. How, how can we say that destroying the whole family can bring any good? And he gives more reasons why. That in the next verse, Kulakshiye pranashanti kula dharma sanatanaha dharma nashte kulam kritsnam adharma bhibhavatyuta. That when the family is destroyed, with the destruction of the dynasty, the eternal family tradition is vanquished, and thus the rest of the family becomes involved in irreligion, adharma. Arjuna is proposing that when the family is destroyed, then naturally with it, the family tradition is destroyed. Here we're talking about family traditions according to the Brahmin caste, Kshatriya caste, especially these two castes, or actually the Sanskrit word is Varna, they upheld the culture in Varnashram society. This idea that one is a Brahmana by birth or a Kshatriya by birth, that is not wholly true, but certainly the Kshatriya blood uh, was transmitted in, in each generation. So Arjuna was saying that if the family is totally destroyed, then the family tradition will also be destroyed. And that tradition is something very wonderful. We see in modern India how the culture, I've been living in India for about 30 years now, and I've seen in one generation how the tradition is being destroyed not by the, not by the death of the family, but by the uh, tsunami of Western culture that's coming into India. And all these very good traditions that people used to follow, they're simply being destroyed. So Arjuna was saying, is this a good thing? It cannot be a good thing that these traditions, these religious traditions that are passed down from generation to generation, if the elders of the family are wiped out, then the, the family tradition will be destroyed. So we see that Srimad Bhagavad Gita is part of the Mahabharata, the most important part of the Mahabharata. And one of the family traditions was that the family elders would teach or they'd, they'd tell the stories of the Mahabharata to the young children. The grandparents would tell the young children. And in this way, it's a lot of fun to hear. There's so many wonderful stories. But the stories are also very educational. Educational means not simply to learn A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. That is not real education. Education means for character building. So by hearing the stories of Mahabharata, we will learn. If we learn in the very childhood, we hear these stories. We shall learn what is right, what is wrong, how we have to act for a higher cause, how we should not act simply for our own selfishness. What is the result of acting properly, even in a case of severe difficulty? There are so many instances. The story of Harish Chandra comes to mind, how even in the most difficult of circumstances, he stuck to the truth, despite everything. So, this kind of education is passed on in the family. The grandparents will tell the children Mahabharat, Ramayana, Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna Leela, and they'll hear. And that will be picked up in the heart from the very beginning of life so that they will know from the very beginning what is right, what is wrong. But Arjuna is saying if the family tradition is stopped and all, the, all this will be broken, then there'll be no one to teach what is right, what is wrong. So now we want to fight for the sake of right, but as a result, more wrong will come because the family will be destroyed, which in itself is a sin. And then all the family traditions will be destroyed. And Arjuna gives an example next. That, Adharma Bibhavat Krishna Pradushanti Kulastriya Strishu Dushtashu Varshnaya Jayate Varna Sankaraha That, when there is adharma, 
then when a dharma is prominent in the family, when irreligion is prominent in the family, O Krishna, the women of the family become polluted. And from the degradation of womanhood, O descendant of Vishnu, comes unwanted progeny. Arjuna had what we call sukshma vichar. He didn't just see on the surface, but he could see the long-range implications of this destruction of the family. That dharma in the Vanashram dharma institution, men have their role to play as brahmanas, kshatriyas, vaishyas, shudras, and women have stri dharma to follow. Stri dharma means that women, their societal role is defined as being mothers, first of all wives, and as mothers. Now, when there's adharma, then, as Arjuna is suggesting here, then women, they're not interested to remain faithful to their husband, and they're not so much interested in looking after their children. They simply become interested in enjoyment. Now, in the modern age, it's very prominent that it's not stressed that women should be faithful wives. It's not stressed that they should be good mothers, look after their children, but it's stressed that they should have a career. They should try to be number one. They should have all rights equal. But the result, of, it sounds very good, but the result is that the children are neglected because the women have other priorities. Now, in this Vedic culture, or in any human culture throughout the world in history, Children are considered the most important members of society. They have to be looked after so nicely that they will grow up to be good citizens. Generation after generation, this will go on. And that depends to a great extent on the mothers giving their motherly care. But if they're too busy out at the office or they're too interested in running around with their boyfriends, then the children become neglected. And Arjuna says the result of this is Varna Sankaraha. Sankara Narakaya. Varna Sankara. That means children who are born not out of a result of a dharmic union. That means the husband, he is the pati guru. He is the just like the, the guru of the family. And the wife, she is the dharma patni, very religious wife. So marriage is a religious institution the eyes of God for husband and wife cooperating to live a religious life in the service of God and bring forth good children who will be good citizens, well-behaved, good character, ideal, worshipping God. But in the modern age, because, to put it very clearly, uh, sex life is simply indulged in without all these considerations, just as a matter of pleasure. The pleasure lasts a few seconds, and as a result, there's Varna Sankara. Children are born out of lust. Now, consciousness is very important. Our consciousness at the time of death determines our next birth. And the consciousness of the mother and father at the time of procreation, that gives rise, that attracts a certain kind of soul to the womb. So if father and mother at the time of procreation if their consciousness is simply full of lust, passion, I shall enjoy, then they shall produce children whose only interest is I shall enjoy and to hell with anyone else. And this we see, this is the modern world as the great so-called philosopher of the modern Western world, John Lennon, said that most children nowadays are born over a bottle of whiskey on Saturday night. Just see, they get drunk, and the result is, nine months later, if there's no abortion, which is another grossly sinful activity, then uh, a child is born. Born in lust. Born out of lust, and born in lust. And the result is, Sankaro narakaya eva kula gnanam kulasya cha patanti pitero hiyeshang lupta pindo dakankriyaha. An increase of unwanted population certainly causes hellish life both for the family and for those who destroy the family tradition. Yes, Arjuna says that by this Varna Sankara, by producing children out of lust, then the, the world becomes like hell, because instead of everyone being religiously dharmic, religiously minded, then everyone is just like a 
Rakshasa, everyone is just out for himself. I, me, and mine. Aham, mamiti. So with such selfish, egoistic people just interested in themselves, then the world becomes hell because no one cares about anyone else and they just want to exploit everyone else. This is modern life. This is what we have. Because Adharma, prominent, irreligion is prominent. Arjuna says, the ancestors of such corrupt families fall down because the performances for offering them food and water are entirely stopped. This is a technical and very important part of what is nowadays called Hindu culture, that the annually the shroud ceremony should be performed, that there's offerings of food and water for the forefathers to, not just food and water, of course, with mantras and procedures and rituals, so that the forefathers, if they, the, the departed ancestors, if they have not attained a good destination, they may do so by the ritualistic help from this side. So that is required, but that is, if that is not done, then the forefathers, they fall down, and if they fall down, then the family members who are supposed to perform these rituals for them, they also become sinful, because every person has responsibility. When one is born, one immediately has a debt to his forefathers, to his present family members, especially to the father and mother, to the teacher, to all other members of human society, even to animals like the cows who give us milk. We have so many responsibilities. This is Vedic culture to understand. We have so many responsibilities. We are not meant to act simply for our own pleasure. We are supposed to act so that we may benefit the whole of human society and ultimately please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Krishna. Arjuna knows this. Therefore, he is confused whether to fight or not because the consequences of fighting seem so terrible. And he's presenting this to Krishna. Arjuna goes on to say that if the family is destroyed, then the whole society becomes run down, chaotic, and those who destroy family traditions, they must go to hell. Are we going to go to hell for this fight, Krishna? Are we going to do such bad things? that we shall have to go to hell by destroying the family. Uh, and Arjuna says that it is very strange that we who are supposed to be noble people, we are supposed to be acting for the sake of dharma, that now we are going to perform adharma. We, are, we want to kill our own family members. So Arjuna proposes that Better I don't fight. And even if the sons of Dhritarashtra, they come and attack me and kill me while I'm standing there without holding my weapons, that will be better than fighting. He comes to this decision and says that Arjuna, having said this, he puts down his famous Gandiva bow, which was especially awarded to him so that he could fight in this battle in so many battles he fought, but this, this is the culmination of Arjuna's whole heroic career. He puts it down and says, I, anayotsya, I, anayotsya, I shall not fight. So Arjuna is presenting what appears to be very good, re and actually they are very good reasons why he should not fight. If we examine, if we, the first time you read Bhagavad Gita, if we examine all the reasons that Arjuna gives not to fight, we definitely have to sympathize with him and we'll think that, well, he's right. What is Krishna going to say? What can Krishna say to rebut his theories? Arjuna is right. He's a good man. He's a noble man. He's not just saying this, he's not afraid. He's not just saying this because he wants to leave the battle. Arjuna is speaking in a manner that all should agree or all might agree is very reasonable. Now, what Krishna says, that is the whole Bhagavad Gita. But we have to see that what Arjuna is saying seems very reasonable and it is on a certain level. But Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, wants to bring Arjuna to another level. Krishna wants to give 
Arjuna a broader picture. What seems reasonable on one level may be totally wrong on another level. We only we have very narrow vision, so we don't understand what is actually beneficial for human society. Krishna will, in the whole of Bhagavad Gita, give Arjuna the sukshma vichar, the subtle understanding of spiritual life that means that Bhagavan, God himself, Krishna, has a higher plan. We may not understand it, but understanding that we are servants of him, we should follow his direction. Now, I'll quickly give a little example to illustrate this, that our beloved Gurudev, Srila Prabhupada, told that before his sannyas life, when he was living as a family man in Calcutta, from his next-door neighbor's house one day, he heard the sound of screaming and yelling and the mother of the house, she was shouting very angry and there was a sound of beating and there was a sound of the young boy crying. Obviously, she was beating her son. So they have the underground intelligence system. Prabhupada sent his servant to ask the servant in the next house what is going on because you won't directly ask. So he came back and said, this is what's going on. See, the older brother in the family he has got typhoid, and in typhoid, you're not allowed solid food. But in the house, they're cooking paratha, fried bread. And the older brother asked the younger brother, bring me some paratha. It smells very nice. I'm hungry. So the younger brother, he brought the paratha. He, he smuggled it in and gave it to his elder brother. And he was found out. And as a result... His mother was beating him severely. Now, what was the result? What, what was the fault of the younger brother? He was asked by his elder brother out of sympathy for him. He brought him some food. He did it because his elder brother was hungry. He did it with all good intent. He didn't do it out of malice. But the result was beating. He thought he was doing good. But actually, it was very bad. And therefore, his mother was beating him severely. Why was she beating him? Out of love for the elder brother. Because she doesn't want him to die by taking food which will kill him. So this is just an example to show that with limited knowledge, we may think that what we are doing is very good, very proper, very right. But without knowledge of the bigger picture, we don't actually know. And this is why Arjuna, who is given what seems to be excellent reasons not to fight, has to be instructed by Krishna. And that is why all of us, we may think we understand what is right and what is wrong, but we have to go to a guru who can teach us from the spiritual platform, from the broader platform, who understands, who can teach us to do actually what is right and what is wrong, this is the setting for the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna Vishada Yoga. This chapter is called The Lamentation of Arjuna. That will be cleared by the crystal clear instruction of Lord Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, in this Bhagavad Gita, which is presented by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada, for the edification of us all. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The ancient wisdom that you have just heard is contained in the publications of the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust. <laughs>